of our meeting for August 14, 2024, with Clinton Parks and Recreation. Are you going to stand for the go pledge? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, undeveloped, and indispensable, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, review and acceptance of July 10th, 2024 minute meetings. Everyone had a chance to look at it. Hey, did you take a look at it? Any comments or questions or concerns on here? No, I'll make a motion to second. Okay, motion has been made by Ryan, second by Mike. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay, no, those are accepted. Parks, field, signage updates. I will check on the status of our signs they weren't ordered. Oh, so they're not in yet? They're not in yet. Did you expect them in? Have I you expect them in? wasn't sure what the timeline was on. Okay. I will get them updated. Yeah, we've been busy this summer with Parks and Rec, I'm sure. Right. It'd be a good thing if we can get them for the fall. Definitely. Because that's when a lot of parks will be being used more. Not that not now. But no, right. totally. Yeah. Okay. And then facilities update. So I have that here for Brian. And he has said Carlisle Park is $45,000 remaining from the FY24 article. He's going to revisit conservation for benches, lighting, the location, and the quantity, looking to trim all trees and dead branches, and scheduled for some time for FY25 tree budget. For Central Park, he said the entrance on Church and Union Street are under construction, including the Church Street Sidewalk Renovation Project. And July 18th, the Cruise and Clinton event was a big success. No damage to either anything in the park. And that's that's good. It, it, I went to that. That was pretty good. Did you go? Or so. That Cruise and Clinton? You went. Yeah, so I'm surprised there was no damage. That's good. Yeah, they <laughs> did a good job making sure that they weren't yeah. affecting our renovation at all. Okay. Yeah. In Vale Street, they're looking to add the irrigation to softball and field and added quick connect to current irrigation to allow us to water infield dirt as needed. And there'll be a 45000 approved through the APRA fund for the skate park upgrades. I believe we already have that, right? Yes. Okay. And then Acre Park is looking for a solution for the water overflow, widen the concrete and get, he's getting pricing for that, maybe artificial turf and, turf and getting pricing for that. New mulch for the playground we put down sometime this summer. Do you know if it has? New mulch was put down. Okay. I think that's it for Parks and Rec update for Brian. I mean, for facilities um, and Parks and Rec department updates. So we're redeveloping all of our rental policies, and I'll have those ready for you guys next meeting just to make them more uniform with both each other and other rental policies around town. Um, we're developing a schedule of weekly programs, including like playgroup, yoga, things like that to go on during the day here at this building, just as more of a push for more space as well. And that'll begin in October once some of the back to school has calmed down, people are getting into their routines. Um, the holiday pops planning has been going on since January, but we're really starting to kick it off following the summer getting more into it it's still come up super fast um, Do you have a date for it the seventh okay. we've already been planning for next summer it was for three days away from uh, the end of our summer programming and it was definitely 
a learning year with the split of our explorers from our playground program, but it was successful in the sense that the children had a really fun and safe summer. Um, we do have a lot of ideas going into next year to make it even more successful going forward. That's good. Bye updates. Yeah, good. Thank you. All right. Anybody have any concerns? Any otherwise? If not, we'll motion to adjourn. Make a motion. Yes, okay. Motion to adjourn was made by Ryan, second by Mike. All favor? All right. Aye. We are adjourning at 6.05. All right. 6.10. We can open up the Fuller Field Commission for August 14, 2024. Review and acceptance of July 10th, 2024 meeting minutes. Do I have a chance to look it over? Any concerns on that? I don't see any either. Motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Mike motion, Ryan second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion accepted. All right, facilities update. That is Ryan again. So he has stone wall, repaired most damaged section, sections to the retaining wall, more sections to be completed at a later date, bath concrete staircases of clubhouse being repaired, and ticket booth brick pillars are being re, repointed and repaired. The restroom concession repairs are operational. That's good. Looking to add sliding windows to two main sections of the concession stand so it can easily be opened and closed during sporting events. Once that is complete and the interior is cleaned out, it will be operational. $5,102 remain from the FY24 warrant article. The future field house repairs with operation operating budget, looking at the heating and furnace and interior and exterior painting. And other items, the ticket booth, Paint and reinforce structure, work discussed finalizing scope and signage, discuss with parks to upgrade current signage. Okay, that fly is really driving me crazy. Yeah. Scoreboard, replace football scoreboard and get operational and the bid for the diamond press box. Big Looking diamond press box. What is it? Big diamond. The bid diamond press box. Oh, big. oh it's supposed to be big. Yes. But he has bid down here. I was wondering what a bid was. Okay, the big diamond press box, looking to repair press box. Okay, that's it for Brian. Any questions on that? And then we have Gregory Barrows here. Do speak. Yes, come on up and just state your name and address for the record. And we'll listen to what you have to say. I'm Gregory, Gregory, but... <laughs> Excuse me, I'm Gregory Barrows. I'm with the 200B Richfield Circle. Okay, I welcome. Some, I have, thank you. Thank you. Thank you to you all. And I have a handout for you. It's a... Thank you. Give us a good model. Pass them down. Okay. <laughs> Shall we share? Do you have enough? No, we have All right, Ed. It's my changed prospectus, and that's the reason why I'm here until... Formally, hit you to what's going on, what, what I'm working on currently. I have, first of all, the takeaways from this from meeting this evening. Well, number one, I've canceled the event that was originally planned for later this month on the 25th, Sunday, the 25th, there, the uh, Fuller Field Vintage Baseball Invitational. But actually, what I've, act, what I've done is postpone it okay, until the year 2028. In the meantime, we'll have some other activities going on here too. But the reason why I did it is because the reason initially for doing it, I found unsatisfactory. Plus, I had a change of fortune back in June, which caused me to revisit and reallocate my resources. So what I have in mind is 150th anniversary celebration of Fuller Field. That would be the capture point. That would be the high point, the tagline. Celebrating the 150th anniversary of Fuller Field. And that's in 2028? 2028. That's why I've rebranded the event for 2028 to be the, in part, be the annual, I'm sorry, the anniversary, the, the Fuller Field Anniversary Vintage Baseball Invitation. It will be an annual event beginning in 2028 in celebration of Fuller Field 
And by the way, it'll be more of a town-wide type of event too, because we can get the entire town to participate. And it's one step closer to making Clinton a tourist attraction for baseball and in particular, vintage baseball. The perspectives that I've handed to you has some more details about what I have in mind for how to proceed, because in this lustrum of years, that's five years between now and 2028, there are a number of other events that I have planned leading up to that event, principally the annual, what will be the annual Fulham Field Vintage Baseball Home Field Prize. That's going to be a game between a Vintage Baseball participating Club 9 and a Clinton Club 9 beginning in 2025. That will begin to add momentum to the idea of the return of Vintage Baseball to the field. An annual event where the winner of that game, it'll be a single game, the winner of that game can claim Fuller Field as their home field. That's the prize. Not for the entire season, but the prize is they'll be able to claim the world's oldest continuously operated baseball park as their home field. Just a prize that I think, but it'll help build interest among the vintage baseball participants, the cranks, as well as the ballers, as well as, as, as the town itself, <clears throat> pardon me, like Cooperstown, they're to a home to America's oldest professional sport and the world's oldest continuously operated baseball park. That is, in a nutshell, what I have in mind. I'm open to questions, too, by the way, but I don't want to take up any more of your time than I need to. Are you aware of what we have, what I have in mind so far? I, I have been updating your, your condition, but not recently. I've had a few changes in fortune. And right now, I'm currently dealing with a, a, a catastrophic flooding situation in my home where the better part of my home was damage. Demolition has already taken place, but reconstruction has not started. So I've got to sort through all of my ruined materials and property damage. Yeah. Right so I've got that sign going. Hear that. It, it happens and I'm being somewhat stoic about it. But the main thing is I had, I need to, on account of that circumstance and a couple of others, I need to allocate my resources otherwise. And over the last year, I did not do this is where I kind of made a mistake. I did not build an organization that could function. Uh, oh, sorry, that could function efficiently without my presence in, pardon me, in a fairly high profile. So that I can take this time now because we're planning five years out to build that organization that can withstand my lowered profile or whatever profile that I'm able to have with it over the course of the development of our program. That's the part of the reason why I've, I've had to postpone it. Too. But the main thing is to keep the momentum going, and I need to be able to do that by building momentum and interest as well as participation here within the town as a civic venture as well. Okay, you mentioned from now till the time it's uh, happening, the 150th anniversary. In 2028. 2028. What's going to happen? Do you have any plans for what's going to happen? Yes, in addition, to the, in addition to the events that I described, the annual events having to deal with the Fuller Field Home Prize, there will also be commercials running on Clinton, uh, Clinton Television, commercials yeah. for Fuller Field, as well as the establishment of my special interest group, the Crank Case, for Wallace as well as Cranks, and a website, which will be on the beginning under development and should be the, should be available. And that's going to be a critical promotional instrument, the website as well as the special interest group on Facebook, to gain interest at, by word of mouth is, can't be, pardon me, can't be word of mouth for advertising and promotion. So those events will be taking place there too. And in terms of sporting events, there will at, at the very least be at least one annual game. It won't be a spectacular like the exhibition that we're talking about. It'll be just a regular game between okay. two participating vintage baseball clubs. Principally, we're going to be raising a Clinton Club Nine as well. To be either all stars ringers, it doesn't really matter. But they will be able to play for the honor of the prize to win the prize to be able to call Fuller Field your home field, at least for the day. Okay. Okay, I see that down here. Um, uh, can you just tell me, what, what's the prank case? Those, that's the group? That's, that's a special interest group. Cr uh, uh, fans of vintage baseball are called cranks. Players are called ballists. So the special interest group would comprise both cranks and ballists and the curious. Okay. All right, that helps. Yeah. 
Any questions for him? No comment. No. So there's nothing happening this year, which is what you well, so not, that'll be, well, there is. You're going to start in 25. Start in 25. However, I will take the opportunity on August 25th of this year to announce what will be unfolding over the next lustrum of years. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like it. Yeah. 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 Because in 2025, you're going to have the DBB Club Nine versus Clinton DBB Club Nine. For the Fuller Field home prize. Okay. All right. Good luck with your planning. Thank you. And your website and all of that. You know? Facebook and commercials. Absolutely. Well, it'll be a good time for all. <laughs> And there's room for everybody to participate. Have you talked to Terry and Gano? I know we, yes, we have been, we, he and I correspond regularly okay. on this. He's one of my advisors as well as uh, uh, people from who are participating already in vintage baseball clubs throughout New England as well as yeah, mainly throughout New England. And that would be largely the clubs that we would be drawing upon in terms of interest. How many teams are there in the area? Do you know? They kind of lose track. Some of them go, come and go. It ebbs and flows, and whether they are officially in quote unquote business or not. But generally, run, we we're running around twelve teams from New England, from Maine rather, through uh, the Net Lake State. Twelve teams all told it, but that can change, and likely will as well. One of our teams, and this is what I want to be able to do in twenty twenty. 2028. One of our teams is from Holliston. Okay. And it's also the 140th anniversary of Casey at the at the bat. Okay. So that's one of the other anniversaries where I want to be able to celebrate in 2028 with a stage, either a stage reenactment of it because of the Holliston team coming from the Mudville neighborhood of Holliston, too, by the way. They lay claim to being the origin of that mock epic poem. So we want to be able to reenact that, or at the very least have a stage read. But the, my preference is to have a reenactment too, by the way, and that's one of the things we'll be working on because we have to choreograph and orchestrate that. I'm looking forward to that too. And it's also another anniversary too, I forget the number, but Ballpark Hot Dogs. Oh. We're celebrating yet another anniversary. As many anniversaries as we can squeeze in on any given year, I want to be able to include Ballpark Hot Dogs, for example, the anniversary of the scorecard. Way back in 1859, I believe. I, sometimes my memory doesn't serve me so well, but I don't want to distract you guys with technical details like that. But there are a number of anniversaries that we want to be able to include annually with our celebration of the Holyfield's birthday. Sounds good. I love it. All right. Thank you so much for You're coming in. Do you have any other comments or questions for us? No, I, I do not. And I'm in touch with Mackenzie and, and, yeah. and Laura. Okay. As well. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Nothing else is on the agenda for tonight, so we need a motion. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Okay, Mike, motion to adjourn. Brian, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.